Our next guest says that volatility in stocks and bonds will continue, so investors should pick their positions carefully. Mark Okada is the co-founder and chief investment officer of the $19 billion Highland Capital Management Fund. Mark, it's great to see you this morning. Good morning, Becky, All Adam, right. and Joe. I would like to talk a little bit about what you think at the beginning of the year. You sat down with your partners and you told them, hey, are you ready for the best year yet? <laughs> Absolutely. I said, hey, you're ready for the best year ever? Well, guess what? That was last year. Uh, 2013 was a fantastic year. Five years of a bull market. You know, that's happened five times, five or six times since 1927. And guess what happens on average in the six years after that? Uh, in that, that year, the market on average is down about 2.3% on average, but the peak to trough is 23% on average. So volatility is certainly something that we should be expecting. Uh, it's what I told all of our partners starting the year. And you know, the nice thing is that's, that's exactly what active managers are supposed to manage. It sets up very nicely for people like us at Highland, and we're very excited about this year. Meaning what? That every time you see a dip, you buy? Or does this mean that you look very specifically for certain stocks and bonds? Well, you've got Jim on the, on the show, and I, I'm a big fan of Jim Grant. Mm -hmm. I think he's one of the finest minds in the business. But he talks about really a lot about this intervention. As that intervention fades, the market goes back to being much more fundamentally driven. And fundamentals in an economy that is, is running out of steam a little bit means that you're going to have winners and losers. I think this market, from a beta standpoint, gets challenged. We don't see the stock market just flying straight up from here. We've got a lot of winners and losers. It means long short becomes a great strategy. Um, last year, if you look at hedge funds, they struggled a bit. Of only 16 large funds beat the, the stock market, only 20% of active managers beat the stock market. And our funds, last year we were up, our long short fund in the, in the healthcare space up 35%. We're up 17 this year. So that stock picking, that fundamental work that we like to do, that's starting to add a lot of value to portfolios. That's only going to get better as a lot of these interventions go away. But Mark, Jim's broader point is that he thinks that we could be in for a lot of trouble still because of what the Fed's done. That it, sure. It's hurt us to this point. He also thinks there's some p potentially catastrophic bad news down the road. Do you agree with that perspective? Well, we got to keep an eye on, on an inflation situation, although we don't really have the capacity there. I do think that a lot of this recovery would be much better um, to that extent. But, you know, we're in the financial services industry, and that area has specifically benefited from a lot of the, the, uh, the QE. I don't think we should have QE at this point. I, I, I'm a, I, I agree with him there. But if you think about what's happening in leverage finance, for example, um, they probably made more in that space last year than they have ever in the history of leverage finance. We see M&A picking up this year. Um, companies are in this point where growth really and, and earnings expansion really is going to get it for them. So we see M&A picking up. They've got a lot of cash. They've got high valuations. It's a perfect in, uh, environment for M&A. And leverage finance f uh, funds a lot of that. So we see deals um, um, being very active this year and a lot of transactions. That's always good for our business. So it, you, you've got to always worry about some of these big tail risks. Um, but in the meantime, there's a lot of good transactions to do. Mark, about an hour ago, we also spoke with Jim Paulson of Wells Capital Management. One of the things he's been worried about is that later this year, you could see us getting to the point where you see an overheating economy. He's been watching what's been happening with commodities over the last uh, two months to this point, watching some of the other things that he thinks could indicate that you will see a much faster speed of money kind of coming back through. Do you worry about that? I, I do. I think that um, we, we can't have um, this much intervention and this much liquidity flooding the system without some sort of uh, response to it. The, the commodity picture, I think a lot of that is, is weather related per se, but, but specific and, and a bounce from last year. Um, but I do think the economy um, looks fairly good to us, um, although it, it will be fairly bumpy. And that's uh, back to my call on volatility. All of this um, situation where we, we, we have a lot of people that are worried about how all this intervention plays out, it's going to put us in a situation where you have volatility. And volatility is good for people like us. We really like that. When correlations are very high, it's very hard for active managers to make good money in the space. And correlations have been coming down and every year since um, for the last three years. And that's been very good. So um, we, 
at, at the end of the day, <clears throat> yeah, you have to worry about some of these things, but making bets in the marketplace is what we do. And to the extent that the market is going to be more driven by fundamentals, driven by valuation, driven by what companies are actually doing, that's good for us. Let's talk a little bit about the bond market. And obviously, there are a lot of different levels in the bond market, but high yield is one that you are a little bit concerned about. You think this could be uh, some distressed issues that start coming up? Absolutely. Um, anytime you have big issuance years like we've had over the last couple of years, um, the street gets paid to do deals, um, you're always going to see some of those deals not work out. And it usually takes a couple years for that to happen. So when we've had this massive increase in, in, in activity in the space, a, a couple years later, you're going to see some of that happen. And we're getting ready for that. I, that you've got to be very selective of, about what's happening in the space today. We're being very careful. I think that sets up very nicely for what we think the next cycle is going to be. I don't think we're going to have this liquidity washout cycle like we've had uh, in the past. I think the next credit cycle that we see will be a fundamental one. It will be situations where companies go into bankruptcy because they have too much debt, because they don't have enough cash flow. That's the kind of a situation I think we're setting up for in distress. And it will be a very robust opportunity, but it's probably about a year off. Okay. Mark, great talking to you. We really appreciate it. And we will see you again soon. Mm. Good to see you, Becky. Mm -hmm. Thank a you.